Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Let's Talk Antiques. Good morning. Yeah, we morning, got uh, got the three uh, three uh, the guy. amigos. Three amigos. We got to count you. He well, didn't say four amigos. That's I'm, the I'm poor not musketeers. In, I'm not included in that. I think I'm going to eat worms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what do we need to say? Three amigos and Howard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're on the you're on the billboard, so. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, but nobody can see it. <laughs> That's the first billboard oh, I ever yeah. saw that was inside. It's not inside. It's, 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 out. it's on the back side of the building. Oh. No, it's on the front side. Oh, is it on the front side? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then the one up to the restaurant, you know, it's on the, it's right behind Jiffy Burger. Oh. You yep. can't miss it if you go through a drive-thru. It's on the outside. The oh. one that I see Howard, right by the road. Is Howard, but. you got to get out more. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's probably true. <laughs> he just walks between the station and his house. That's, that's all. That's everybody. Yeah. Well, and he starts that little car up and coast from yeah. uh, from his. It's driveway. downhill. Yeah. I got to push it back. <laughs> hey, listen. I want to give a shout out to uh, all the employees over at Baker Brothers. Those ladies really take care of me. I wasn't in there five minutes, and they had my prescription done. I think they're wanting to get rid of me. What do you think, Howard? <laughs> I'm not going to say. <laughs> no, they're really nice ladies. That, that, they are nice. And they there. are so polite to yeah, people. They're, they're, that's a nice place. Mm-hmm. So if you're out and about shopping, shop local. That's it. <laughs> Please do. You know that, that helps our local economy. That is an old drugstore. For oh sure. yeah, well it was the old hospital or something upstairs. Above it. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's where I was born, Howard. Oh, okay. Well, mm-hmm. I, I was upstairs and I've worked my way down. Now, <laughs> now that was was it a drugstore then? You know, I don't I, I don't know about that. I was hey, Howard. When you're like a he wasn't old enough to thirty know. minutes old, you don't know if it's a drugstore. You drug mean store. you mean you don't remember? No, I don't. <laughs> no. Oh well. I was born over an AMP grocery store. Really? Yeah. Mm. Believe it or not, <laughs> there was apartments over top of it. My, really? Yeah. I was born in the home. I figured it's just up on the roof. That's <laughs> up on the roof. Oh, well, <laughs> no, that'd no. be a song. <laughs> Now, Howard, what? was you born or hatched? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> See, we're off subject already. We yeah, haven't yeah. even started. It's your fault. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess so. So we're going to talk about something today. But What are we going to talk about, Howard? I don't know. Yes, you do. Oh, mm. transportation. Yeah. Items. Like? Oh, railroad lanterns, uh, air, airplane memorabilia, mm-hmm. you know, airline, I guess, uh, cruise ship mem- uh You were talking about earlier the uh, wings like the, that the pa- a pilot wore. Yeah. Although people collect Like a those. $600 pair? Yeah. And uh, railroad lanterns or, or the steps where you get out of the, used to get out of the car, you know, the Pullman car. Which the, you, have. you have. I have one of those, yeah. yeah. Worth quite a good bit of money, too. That's yours? I thought that was David's. No, that's oh, mine, really? yeah. Cool. It, it could be mine. Okay. All he wants is $4,000 for before it. Before the end of yeah, the show. Yeah, but you told me one's just sold for three, and, I'm, yeah. and you're going to save shipping. I got it right <laughs> I was thinking more like a hundred and a half. Oh no 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 no! no. <laughs> what do you say, Philip? I I give you one seventy five. See, no, I no. wanted to give fifty dollars a letter. B and O. <laughs> okay. Hey, well, we may have a call well, here let's already. Let's see okay. if we got here. You're on. Let's talk antiques. Hey, a uh, little bit more about the Baker Brothers drugstore. Oh yeah, uh-huh. sir. Well, jump on in here. Uh, this is the other David. This is Brad David. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, too, was born upstairs in the Fair Clinic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my mother used to tell me that during World War II, uh, and I don't know when the drugstore started, but definitely was in operation during World War II, that it would get so, that their soda fountain and mm-hmm. place where they served food in there would get so dirty and so full of mud that uh, they made them shut down for either an hour or two hours in the afternoon just to shovel the dirt out. That's because of all the maneuvers. All them soldiers going in there that had been on maneuvers, I'm sure. places to eat. And, yeah. uh, and I can remember them having a soda fountain in there with uh, burgers and stuff, I think. I know they had, you know, milkshakes and No, and they whatever, did They but. did have the soda fountain. And do you remember they also had that wooden phone booth in there? You remember it? Yeah, the wooden phone booth. Mm-hmm. I remember that, yep. And they also were the Western Union site <clears throat> for... Manchester, if you want to send a telegram or receive a telegram, or money uh, back there in the back of the drugstore part, and I imagine that was a busy operation during the war too. Yeah, yeah, and so David, I guess me and you can answer Howard's question. There was a drugstore uh, beneath the hospital where we was born. 
That's true. See that? See? And, it's uh, true. Okay. And uh, my mother said that uh, when she had me, that it wasn't customary that somebody was there 24 hours a day, but that uh, one of the nurses, in, I don't remember who, she probably named it, named which one it was, but uh, they uh, stayed overnight with her the first night. Hmm. Uh, wow. Of course, I know that's just, that was the, the, the length of time that was there. Uh, but I'm busy, and i got to get off the phone here. Uh, Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks for calling in. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Bye-bye. Well, Bye-bye. Well, I'll tell you something else about Baker Brothers while we're still on Baker Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, when you go in there, she has mm-hmm. all of these old vintage pictures, and she's got vintage mm-hmm. medicines and, yep. and, uh, and, and you know, the tools that they used. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. All right. Yep. A friend of mine in, uh, from... from uh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm your only friend. Okay, a friend of mine from high school, an old friend. The older friend than you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Nobody's uh, older than David. Uh, no. well, you know, <laughs> he, uh, he's, a, he's like a computer science professor in, in Indiana now. But he, uh, his first job was, uh, was making a spreadsheet for a, a pharmacist in Cleveland, Tennessee, who, huh. uh, who collected all kinds of old... Uh, medical memorabilia, and he well, wanted he wanted somebody to computerize it and uh, and organize it all for him. So that was and it that was done. his high school job. Yeah, huh. so it got done. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. It take a while to do all this. I was going to say I, I I can't imagine somebody starting from scratch on your stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about organizing the collection. He's got it all in his head. Yeah, as long as as long as Dave's got it in. Oh, well, you remember uh, Howard when we was growing up, like old junkyard guys. Mm-hmm. They didn't have all those uh, computer stuff. Oh, no. But they could tell you which row and what car right. and what part was still on. Right. You used to and go. they'd have hundreds of cars. Yeah, you'd go in that, uh, usually an old shack in the front. You'd go That's in it. there and, and yeah. he'd say, what you, what you looking for or something like that, you know, and you'd say um, such and such. Oh, yeah. and he'd almost tell you right to the point where exactly. it was in the yard. Yes. And uh, and most of the time, them old guys, too, could build transmissions Automax or yeah. straight shift. Yeah. And they could actually work on generators. They do all of it, rebuild all that stuff, remember? Yep. What's happened to all that, Howard? Uh we we're, we're we don't we country. don't rebuild things anymore. Are we Everything a is, country? We're a throwaway. We throw everything away. Uh, much I paid for one transfer uh transmission to be rebuilt, so how'd that work for you? <laughs> uh it worked. It was. It, yeah. was just, I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't, no. wasn't it wasn't fun to pay for it though. <laughs> no, no. A couple no. thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. to get one done. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't something I could do in my backyard. No. It, it needed it to be a little more well, you well know, done than that. I can remember getting the uh, of when you work on a car and you need something rebuilt, you get the motors manual out. That was the that brand name of the book that you get and it had all the cars you know yeah and you get in there and it and rebuild stuff yeah following the instructions and, mm-hmm. and, and they would update you every year too you yeah they the would update, update. and of course nowadays like i say i don't know well i guess there's somebody's rebuilding them somewhere but it's being done in a big factory somewhere yeah, it's been and then the the, you go down to one of the car places here and you say i need a such and such and they give you a rebuilt model but it wasn't rebuilt in a somebody's garage it was done in a big factory somewhere i think you can still have transmission free built in town oh, oh yeah you, you can, can have it possibly yeah, yeah. possibly you can. <laughs> but uh the thing about what i was talking about is that's what they've gone to and starters oh yeah you know, mm. and alternators yeah you know you go buy an alternator you can, you, you can buy rebuilt alternators oh know, yeah instead of uh new old stock right and uh or, or, in, or, or starters in. yeah but uh, that has nothing to do with trans. Well, I guess it does tr- indirectly yeah, it, with transmission. Well, there are trans transportation. Well, you got to have a transmission to row. No, that's true too. I just okay. see railroad, airline, and cruise ships. Though, yeah, so we're, well, we're, we're veering off of that. We are. Hey, <laughs> you haven't told any, the world about where we where we are. You know, like on the radio and uh, on the TV and all that stuff. Uh, currently, we're at WMSR. <laughs> are at, you uh, sure? At nine in the morning. <laughs> well, what's the address here, Philip? Uh, I don't know. It's it's a uh, it's next to uh, next to the school. What next school? The, uh, what school? Next to the. Uh, the oh, it's way the down from shelter. The st- next to a <laughs> couple of churches. It's in between the <laughs> no. It's in between the school and the animal shelter. There you go. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. right about dead center, really. Well, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. If you, if we're dead center. What there school is okay. it though? Oh, Westwood. Oh, he does yeah, know that. Actually, How about yeah? There you and, go. And are we on Oakdale <laughs> Street? Okay, I'll go with that. It says Thunder, We're at 1030 Thunder Road. Oakdale at the Street. Well, that's though. the driveway yeah. in. The one is full of ruts. <laughs> <laughs> now we got some of them fixed. 
Yeah, but the it rained real hard and washed <laughs> some really? of that. Really? Oh, it's Howard's going to go have to go have to go out and shovel a little more yeah. after the show's over. All right. Okay. Well, Howard's so got Josh will be happy about yeah, that. Look at look at all them big muscles on him. There you know he could do it. So so we're on the radio. Don't do a muscle pump. Right. You're on TV. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, luckily they can't see me. They can see the back uh, just, of your Just the mm. shiny spot back. <laughs> Tonight we'll be on Charter Channel 193 at 6 o'clock. Okay. There you go. And, uh, You're and good. a couple other replays. We're on Light Tube Channel 6. Which isn't uh, on Channel 6. Which isn't on. <laughs> no, that Light Tube. Oh, 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 it is. Okay. Channel, the 193 is yeah. not on 6. I yeah, but it says it's Channel 6, is doesn't it? Is it still Charter or is it Spectrum now? Uh, <laughs> Spectrum bought charters, and I think or, or, or Charter did, bought Spectrum. They kind of they merged. Or did they just change? Names? I think it goes by Spectrum now. Yeah. No, I think it was some kind of merger. Oh, thing. okay. I uh, don't know either. So, uh, and, oh uh, yeah, and uh, you can watch us on Facebook and YouTube. There you mm, go. Okay. <laughs> what about the likes, Howard? We need likes, don't we? Yeah, we and do. Shares. Like us. And we're, shares. We're needed. Yeah. Like yeah, us. Like us. <laughs> Like you, you said the shares is more important, right? Well, Subscribe. It, the more you YouTube. share it, the more people get to yeah. see it. Because you it, know that it, we've it goes almost, out to all your friends. Yeah. Do you do you three realize that we spent almost fifteen minutes talking about nothing? <laughs> <laughs> I, t I told. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he's our boss. He, he's, I'm not nobody. I'm just a go. team member. No, I don't never no, want, no, no, I want no, to be part of the team. I yes. just want to be a team member. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a yes man. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, you know, not like you, Howard. You was like a second lieutenant, so you was the, was the boss. No, I was, I was way down on the food chain. <laughs> well, wasn't you a second lieutenant? Well, was, I made it the first lieutenant, but still. Well, there you but go. But you had these captains and majors and lieutenant colonels and colonels and generals and stuff all ahead of you. <laughs> ah. Yeah. It's kind of like you know the private. He's he's got sergeant. He's got corporals and sergeants and you know all ahead of him. So it's way down on the chain. You just there. steal the general cars and drive them real fast. I tell you what, <laughs> um, where does the the one officer now? They're they're not uh, as far as rank. You know, I think my uncle at the time. Wasn't it at the time the mo in, during Vietnam wasn't a W four the highest warrant officer you could be? I believe it. I, I uh, well, he was, I think it was it was W four. I don't think they had a five then. No, did I don't know. Do they now? I don't I, know. I, I, I know it used but to. But anyway, go, he was a warrant officer. Yeah. Well, my dad was a warrant officer in the Signal Corps. It was a technical rank at that time. Yeah. Then later, uh, like in Vietnam, they had all these pilots in the in the army. Were they warrant officers? And they. A lot of them, well, a lot of the helicopter pilots were uh, warrant officers. So they're, they're an officer, they have the, for pay reasons and you know, benefits and stuff like that, but they usually weren't in, they, they weren't in a command position usually. Okay. That's the difference. You know, they, but they got command pay? Well, yeah, because of their skill and uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. see. And see, my dad was in the career, um, uh, Signal Corps, a very technical and he had was came up through the ranks and became a warrant officer because of the technical skills that he had. Speaking of signal, which technically he was still in the service when I was in the service. So when I was a first lieutenant, I outranked my dad. Oh, wow, that would be. He, handy. But he told me, "says Don't try it." So, <laughs> so speaking of signal, uh -huh. have you ever heard signal oil? Oh yeah, yeah. What do they use it for, Howard? Uh, blinker fluid in the uh, in your car. Well, what about railroad lanterns? <laughs> Railroad signal lights. Yeah, railroad signal lights. <laughs> Before there were cars. And you can tell a lot of cars are low on blinker fluid. Yeah. So, they, they, they don't work. They, they don't work down. when they make turns. But anyway, yeah. Ronnie was talking about that signal oil. Yeah. Well, there was a company called Signal Oil. Oil company, yeah. yeah an oil, actually. But what did you say they were for, Ronnie? Uh, they were for railroad signal lights, signal yeah. lanterns. Right. Before they went to kerosene. See right there. It was a little. They were tinted. They were, it was like orange tinted. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Uh, no. I, and, you know, the railroad lanterns were different colors and that had different meanings. Like some. Well, well, wait a minute, Ronnie. What are the different meanings, Howard? He's the railroad guy. He didn't know. Tell us some different meanings on the different colors of the lanterns. Well, obviously, red meant stop. 
Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. And what did green mean? Go. Clear. <laughs> well, clear. Well, it's the meant track, the same thing. The track, the track was clear. clear. You could move. But now they had to swing but, those but they, but they in had, different ways. Yeah, but if you had a white lantern or a clear lantern, there were mm. uh, there different were, motions that you could do. If you made a complete circle, it meant one thing. What does it you, mean, Howard? I don't, that part I don't remember, but. Uh, that, that's what I'm interested in is. How they waved those things yeah, and what it, that meant because they did have different meanings. Yeah, if you waved it a certain way or moved it around like a big circle or just a half mm -hmm. arc or, or different you, ways, it meant different things. You think that's why they call them signal mm -hmm. lanterns? I have so, an idea. You know, they had the flags that they used in the daytime. What? And then, uh, well, the Navy used to use the flags too. Well, I don't know. Especially they, when they land in planes. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, they, also, ships. they also could signal. Be, a lot of times, uh, like in the military, in the Navy uh, particularly, uh, and I guess maybe the military, Army might have years and years prior to that. But uh, if you didn't want to, uh, you, you didn't want to break radio silence so that the enemy would know where you were, you, you communicated with flags or lights. Mm hmm and if you see a lot of war, old war movies, you know, they got the big round light and the guy, it's got shutters and the guy's, mm -hmm. yes, you know, he's sending like Morse code. Uh, but it was a code that they would use lights or flags or signal. And the railroads used that to some extent. An extent Do you still too. remember Morse code? Uh, no, not really. I haven't used it in so long. I was never very good with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could do SOS. I figure that's all you really yeah, need. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Just as long it, as they didn't ask you where you were at with the reply. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. They still use those flags, you know, like at, uh, at the airlines and stuff when they're coming in, those planes and stuff, you know, when they're parking them, and you know how they yeah, do. Yeah, well, do. yeah, right, right. Yeah. Hey, it's time to take a break. It's your fault. I know. We got to go. We'll be back, hopefully, if the power doesn't get turned off. But we'll play commercials here, and that'll get it back on. <laughs> The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way. At the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 730 until 9, Monday through Saturday. Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get you used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. Two dollar fee is all you pay, sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of, each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too, swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking. All right, let's get back on subject here, fellas. <laughs> what are we talking about? I thought we were on transportation. Subject. Transportation. Well, haven't we kind of been talking about that? In a roundabout yeah, way. <laughs> okay. So uh, Antique Weekly had a, uh, had a big story about the Sulis uh, transportation mm. auction recently in uh, Missouri. And uh, and so a lot of really, really nice things went for an awful lot of money. Uh, like? Like a sign that's a, a drum head of a Santa Fe uh, Super Chief sign. Mm. Sold for four and for five figures for some of those. Good grief. Uh, a pair Got of, any of them hired? Mm -mm. A pair of Pullman lounge chairs that would from a from a train themed man cave or basement which was what they were going for sold for four hundred and seventy five dollars so just they're a like chair a 32 a, a or nice 36 chair. inch yeah. sign well twenty three thousand dollars yeah well i'm sure and a uh, uh 11 porters step boxes sold anywhere between 275 dollars and uh three thousand dollars and by, by the way we actually have one here in the studio yeah we got one we here. what is it howard it's B and O, Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. And where in the world did you get that? Did you just like when Somebody, you got off a train? You grabbed yeah, he it. He grabbed, grabbed it, it. And ran. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the you porter, know that's stealing. Por porter wasn't. That's stealing. Howard. The porter didn't say to put it back. <laughs> no, he didn't oh, tell me. Was, no, he didn't say. <laughs> no, what what that's from is. Uh, All right, here it is. Here's here, here comes the story. How Here's much did alibi. you give the porter to let you run with it? Uh, somebody bought it for me, believe it or not, as okay. a gift. Would that still be considered receiving stolen merchandise? <laughs> it could be. I, I don't know how they how got it. How long ago did you get it? 
Oh my! Uh, Twenty, thirty years ago. Yeah, okay, a long Longer. time ago. So does it uh, just sit in the kitchen so you, so your wife can reach the? No, the top what, show? what it was. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's when we owned the campground in uh, the KOA campground mm-hmm. in Sweetwater, Tennessee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in our lounge area, you, you, when you came in the door, to, we had a store and, a, mm-hmm. and of course, the uh, check-in registration desk. And we had a, 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 an area set up as a lounge <laughs> with the television, you know, and uh, chairs. And I had these empty uh, showcases. And so I put a lot of, me- I have a lot of uh, several r- other railroad items right there. I had and you more filled the showcases up with that? I filled them up with uh, uh, railroad memorabilia. And then on the walls, we had r- uh, train pictures. I got a lot of photographs of mm. trains, mm. old stuff. And uh, so, so uh, I was, that was given to me, I think, for a birthday or something by a family member. Well, whoever was really likes you. Yeah, I don't know what they paid for it or where they got. You sure it. they paid for it? I don't know. <laughs> there might be a B&O port. They're just well, getting rid of it. Except the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad is no longer around, no. but uh, it, I guess it ended up being part of Conrail, and then who knows who has those track rights now. Okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, also, there was uh, air and sea uh, artifacts like a World War II aviator's helmet and goggles. Uh, that sold for a hundred and forty dollars. Hmm, that seems real reasonable. It's pretty good, yeah. For uh, you got to think, it's got to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so there, there was a whole lot of stuff. Well, yeah, look at the stuff out. what's that? The desk there. The, the stand. Despite missing its original interior, this oak uh, ticketing cabinet uh, make sold for eight hundred dollars. So how how big is that? Do you think? That's I didn't mention that because I have I'm no idea. I'm gonna say the just guess, Wouldn't that be about four foot tall? The cabinet, the ticketing cabinet. I would think so. Yeah, yeah. and then it's got a few. It's got drawers underneath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really nice. And Was there uh, some other stuff? Uh, a pair of Pennsylvania Railroad lounge chairs. Oh, that's the ones. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, several kinds of railroad. Uh, circa 19. 19- 40 parlor car lounge chair from the New York, New Haven, and Hartford line mm-hmm. sold for the price of a modern recliner at $800. Huh. Probably See? not quite as uh, huh. as comfy, though. Probably I'd have, better. I'd rather have the railroad one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lamps of all types sold well. Uh, 1938 builder's plate and number board from uh, a number board. From New York Central Locomotive, number 5449, which saw service as part of the 20th Century Limited, brought $17,000. Yeah, see, the locomotives were numbered. Right, yeah. That's how you identified them. There was a plaque or something, if, right, if you will. $17,000 Yeah, the plaque that went on well, top well, of it. Well, I mean, if you're a railroad guy. <laughs> if you're a railroad guy, especially if it's oh, yeah. your railroad, you know, a lot of people... They're into a particular line or, you know. Like cars. Like cars, know. yeah. People and, collect uh, only Fords or Chevrolets or whatever. But um, that was um, like the headlights. Is there any headlights? I didn't, I didn't you know? see where that is. Well, we there. looked up them. There, but okay. some of those headlights oh, yeah. are like $2,000 oh, yeah. for the headlight. Just the headlight. Well, you got to remember the rest of the engine was scrapped and just certain little odds and ends were saved by somebody and... It came down through here. Yeah, history. like the the brass throttle. Yep. I wonder if they saved a lot of the gauges, Howard. I don't well, they might have, but You would that, think that, the railroad itself would have saved them. For a little while, but then, you know, when they got rid of steam, you know, they, they uh, and and the stuff for diesel engines is interesting to some people, but not like anything from a steam locomotive. Right. You know, that, that, there's a mystery about a steam locomotive. Speaking of that, you know, um, we're going to look it up, but like the bales. Oh, yeah. oh my, yeah. yeah. Whistle, whistles, too, well, by the well, way. What about, what about the signal balls that they used at the stations? You know, they started out, well, they started out with black and white, which didn't work very well. <laughs> if the train was on time, yeah. they would raise a white ball up. And if it was late, they'd raise a black ball up. Mm-hmm. And when he left the station, they would lower it about halfway. But, hmm. you know, later on, they started putting lights in, like, copper balls. Hmm. 
Don't you yeah. remember? I've seen pictures, but I hadn't seen any, yeah, I don't any yet on here. I got a, a 19th century oak ship's wheel with brass fittings, a red iron hub, and eight turned oak spokes. Uh, was sold for four hundred and seventy-five dollars. Hmm. That seems real reasonable. Yeah. Seems yeah. like seems like a decent price for that. So. How hmm. about tr- how about the train whistles? Any there's well, any? I don't think this article had a lot <coughs> no, of that, but we're gonna have. we're gonna look <coughs> okay. up some train whistles. You want to? Because what what uh, back in the day the uh, the whistle <coughs> a lot of times the whistle was owned by the engineer. Really? And he changed it out when he changed locomotives. They had particular sounds. Oh, yeah? If, now, there was a stock one that belonged on the locomotive, and then I guess if, you know, if it was... Kind of like putting they, those Oluga horns And then on the, the other thing was how they blew it. A lot of the engineers had a... They could recognize an, a, an engineer by the how yeah. he blew the horn, whistle. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know... Wonder, uh, I wonder who's got the Casey Jones whistle. I don't know. I've got a, a six-and-a-half-inch diameter... Six and a half inch diameter brass or bronze locomotive, five chime step top steam whistle. Yep. Nine bids, three thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, this was you know, of course they in the early days, uh, earlier days of the railroading, the engineer he was assigned a locomotive and he took care of it like. You know, he cleaned it and he was shined really, it and everything. He now, was later, really like an airline pilot. Yeah, right? late, later, you know, that changed, you know, and it wasn't quite as, they got rotated around. So that's when the, some of the guys would take their whistle with them and change it out. But uh, at one time, the, the engineer was, yeah, he was, he was the man. He mm-hmm. was esteemed like an airline. The airline pilots don't have the same status they did 20 years ago, yeah. you know. Because there's so many pilots and so many airlines, you know, it's the same, it's changed. You know, we are just talking about Casey Jones. Do you know he's from Tennessee? I did not. Jackson, Tennessee. Well, that's <laughs> where, um, there's a restaurant over there that's full of his memorabilia. Oh, it's really? called Casey Jones. Like what? Uh, oh, I don't remember. It's been so long since I've been there, but they've got like a little museum. But I mean, like, what of his? Uh, like I said, I don't remember. It's been so long since I've been there. Good if it food, was full, though. surely you can name one item they uh, got. A lot of have his overall. Well, you know, he had he had the wreck. Uh, you I'm know, looking. 1900, he was killed. In a, in a, and those. they got some lot of pictures and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> it's right off the interstate, right in the heart of right off. You know, it's just about the center. So, here. so what happened to him? Why did he get killed? He he his train collided with a I know, caboose that was who, stalled oh, in the tracks. Yeah, caboose. and you know he was up front. You know when he yeah. Okay, well, so you know they they. <coughs> uh, Pat he was a Pat I believe it was he was running he, a passenger train. He was trying and, to stop it. And uh, they ran you know 100 mile an hour, and they maintained <coughs> a tight schedule, and it was proud to be on time, mm-hmm. and so, which is changed somewhat because of regulations but uh uh so i guess he was probably trying to make up time or he was trying to keep on time and he was highballing it as they said and there was a train stranded and they didn't have the light systems or the warning systems like today with the signals you know yeah like uh, which 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 would have showed him a red light on a signal tower and he would have known Mm. to stop where he was you know Mm -hmm. or slow way down Mm mm-hmm but uh and you know there's another thing too uh you you what about torpedoes are they still have the torpedoes available i think that's what they used to call them these the the uh when the train stalled for some reason a brakeman would get out and go back down the line or and i guess somebody probably went forward and they would put a charge uh an explosive charge on the uh, track oh to signal and the trains coming roaring up there going real fast and he would hit that torpedo, and there would be a loud explosion sound. I've never heard of that. And uh, that, then they would know to stop. There's something up ha- has happened ahead of time. I think they called them torpedoes. I well, don't know why it, that particular, but I think that's what they called them. If a train's doing 100 miles an hour it, uh, <laughs> with a mile, mile, or say a half a mile's worth of cars. Oh, my. You how, can't, long, how long would it take to stop one hour? I don't know, but it would take a long time. Because uh, I witnessed something one time. 
uh, in Sweetwater. The, the railroad goes right through the middle of Sweetwater. Mm -hmm. the, from running, I, used from, I guess it's from Knoxville to Chattanooga. And it's a fairly busy track. But the trains are going slow. Now, they don't come through at high speed. They're probably going 30 mile an hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. We were having a car show uh, in downtown Sweetwater around the old depot and the hotel, the old hotel and stuff. And it was big crowds of people. And there were cars on both sides of the track. And uh, a, a freight train was come, came through, and this man was trying to cross the tracks, and he fell. And the train, he couldn't get up for some reason, and the train, uh, they saw him, and they hit the brakes. Well, we're off the air, folks. Well, just on the radio. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, uh, EAS system, mm. well, emergency yeah. warning system. Yeah. But. Uh, so what happened when he hit the brake? Well, the train just, it was the strangest thing I ever saw. The train was sliding. The, all the wheels were locked oh, up. Yeah. It was the quietest thing I ever heard. Really? It didn't squeal no like it does in the And it just slid through there. And. No. I'm sorry, but I have no control over that. Ah, uh, that's okay. <laughs> and I guess that's is. going on the TV. So. All right, that was the emergency. Okay, emergency. so to But anyway, this train, it just was sliding. Mm. There was absolutely no sound. It was the quietest thing. It, but And everybody knew, so a lot of people saw what happened, and it just scared them the living daylights. Finally, the train came to a stop, <laughs> but it, it slid for the longest time. That has an awful lot of weight, and there's low friction on steel wheel against steel rail that's mm -hmm. why trains are so efficient mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why they have a tough time stopping and they got it all stopped and they ran over there and the man was between the rails and the train had gone over him and had not hit him oh he had like ducked down he was lucky a lot of times uh, if you try that trick don't try that trick on it don't just try think that. Yeah. because things sometimes are hanging down yes. under the cars oh, yeah, for yeah. some reason a broken piece of metal or sure. a wood but nothing like that and he came he, well, he just got bruised from tripping and falling it's the only bruises he had wow and but it was the strangest thing watching that train not make a sound not make a sound but just slide through there so smooth and quiet hmm. it was strange uh, so how long would how, a hundred mile an hour train it, 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 it would take miles wouldn't it it would take a mile maybe to mm -hmm. stop that thing they probably have to walk back that far they got it figured out I'm sure hey we better take a break yeah we got to take a break uh, we'll be right back the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way. At the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 730 until 9, Monday through Saturday. Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get you used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. Two dollar fee is all you pay, sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of, each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too, swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking! Alright, we're back with, uh, let's talk antiques, and you looked, uh, you looked up the torpedo, what'd they call it, yeah. what was the other? They said it, oh shoot. Rail detonator. It's, it's called a rail detonator, yeah. and, but in America it's referred to as a, as a torpedo. Yeah, I don't know why it had that name. It's a coin-sized device used as a loud warning signal in train, for train drivers. It's placed on the top of the rail, usually secured with two lead straps, one on each side. When the wheel train passes over, it explodes, emitting a loud bang. And uh, it's, uh, it was used as a caution for dense fog, a warning a train was stopped ahead, a warning of ongoing engineering works ahead, uh, or when a signaler or other railroad employee requires to stop approaching trains in an emergency. 
and when you ran it over, you were supposed to slow down to 20 miles an hour or less and not resume your original speed until at least two miles beyond where it encountered the device. Mm -hmm. But that they're obsolete now because of soundproofing in modern locomotive cabs. So, no, about that. Which means that if you're yelling at a train and train when it goes by, they're not going to be able they're to hear you. They're going to hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So Casey Jones did have his own train whistle. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie said it was like six stack, Ronnie? Yeah, it was six tubes. Mm -hmm. And said uh, everybody knew him by the distinct whippoorwill yeah. like sound that it made. Yeah, they could tell the by the particular engineer by the time. And a lot of times how the, how their, the pattern of their blue whistle sometimes. They mm -hmm. had their own little play not a tune not as a song necessarily but you know the, the, way, the way the way they blew it mm -hmm. well sticking with staying with transportation <laughs> <That'll> <laughs> All right. get kinda, back on track. i've got a so we, we took pan am uh so you talk about pilot wings mm -hmm. you know so you know your pilot yeah. always has has those little wings on and stuff so this is a pan am american airlines uh two-star senior pilot also referred as to the captain wings the buy it now on it was seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're into aviation and airplanes, you, you probably have a little side collection of the, the of yeah. those things like that. And then. I actually <coughs> have a DES model, and we'll look up some of them. Um, it was made for National Airlines, and it was an executive model, and it's huge, Howard. It's like what is it? Uh, it's, uh, the plane. Oh, a plane model. Uh -huh. Okay. It's a prop driven four engine, and it's probably got a two foot wingspan. Mm -hmm. But it's made out of one piece of aluminum. You know, they machined it. Mm -hmm. and they made fifty of them, and I'm gonna g just guess that thing's worth between twenty five hundred and three thousand hmm. um, dollars. I, I imagine they probably bought, would give those to what, like a well, exec s these executives for, or, yeah, or a yeah, these were made for the executives. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a senior pilot that's retiring, you know, yeah. and they it's a memento, from, you know. But they were they were made by a professional company that yeah. did these that. particular ones were made for executives, mm -hmm. and they only made fifty of them. So yeah, and National Airlines, no less. How yeah. about that? You don't see you know, them anymore. National Airlines was in uh, operation during World War Two. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think they quit in seventy or nineteen seventy or nineteen eighty somewhere in there. I want to say those were given to the airline by the airline by the airplane manufacturer. Sometimes that happens when too. They, when you they know. built those planes, they would give them those. Yeah, models. sure. I say you're right. That's yeah. why they made fifty of them. Mm -hmm. I've got a uh, a thirty inch long uh, raised up Holland Boeing seven twenty. It says Eastern Airlines on it. It says this is a travel agent model plane. Oh yeah, put them at the at yeah. the travel agents to get people to come in off the street. Twenty seven bids. It sold for one thousand seven hundred eighty one dollars. Wow, that's the most expensive one. There's a uh, uh, one fiftieth size Pac Men. It's an MD eighty model airplane uh, with Alaska Airlines. It's also a travel agent display model. Uh, one bid on that went for one thousand six hundred and ninety dollars. So, oh, Dave, you got one. Let's see, a uh, vintage Air France aluminum uh, Constellation right. aircraft. Ooh, the Constellation model. was a sharp plane. And this is like, the guy who's holding it. It looks it covers more than half of his body. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but it, they wanted three grand, and they took a best offer on that. So it must have been in the twenty-five hundred range. Yeah, probably so. The uh, there's a nineteen sixties contractor, uh, National Airlines model for that went for they wanted twenty-five hundred dollars and took a best. Now that offer. was a jet one there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's there's another American Airlines travel agent model, and it's huge. They show these. It's like it's in front of a window. And it goes up halfway up the window from the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, buy it now for eighteen hundred dollars. Hmm. And uh, now, the reason for this show, Howard, yes, is to educate people that's got this kind of stuff sitting around, like those wings and yeah, and, and some of the railroad stuff. People be surprised how many railroad runners just in Manchester, Tennessee, oh, or Tullahoma, right? Especially Tullahoma, Tell Tennessee. Yeah. They got a lot of track over there. Right. <clears throat> let me fill in. Let me let me search something here. Well, <laughs> so so some of those models, I'm I'm going down 
10, 12, mm. and they're still in the six, seven hundred dollar range. I'm still in seven hundred, and I've went to a whole page. Wait, we got a call coming in here. Maybe okay. we got somebody okay. with a comment. Uh, you're oh on much stock it's antiques. Just... Yes. Uh, when I lived in Normandy back in the fifties, the train going through there, they'd hang the mail on a pole, and somebody from the train would reach out with a hook and grab it. Right. right. Mail, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure what year they stopped using that. Ooh, I think they were doing that up through the 50s. Because they used to have a, sp a special car on the on the passenger trains, usually, or almost always, that sorted the mail as it as the train traveled. Oh, well, really? Yeah. Well, right. that saved a lot of time. And uh, they would go, they wouldn't even, they might slow down a little bit to catch that not bag. Much. but uh, And they, a lot of times if at that station, they would throw a bag off for mail for that time. Right. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But I lived, when I left there in 57, they were still doing that. Okay. That's great. Yeah. See, I told you people listen to our show. How about that? I've well, got thanks. A, thanks thank for calling. Thank you for calling. So on, on that, I've got a railroad sign that's cast iron that says, uh, Caution, look out for mailbag when right. train passes. Yeah. $1,400. <laughs> yeah. And then a heavy, antique heavy canvas U.S. mail bag uh, brass uh, lock. This is the lock that goes on, on the, on on the, the mailbag. Well, well, it is with the bag, too. Okay. <laughs> and $125 for those. Mm -hmm. Well, they made different size bags. Now, yeah. I've got one. Um, you know, it's about the size of a punching bag. Yeah. I actually ha still have mine. And um, I don't know what, what that would be worth. And I have, like, several. There's only one on here. There's, Does it there's... show the bag itself, yeah. though? Let me see if we can. Uh, see if it's got a picture of the bag. Looks like that's a. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Pretty, that's about the same size. Yeah. It's about a punching bag size. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy bag. Yeah, see, that's one of the reasons why the railroads were able to run uh, passenger trains for so long is that uh, they had uh, mail contracts mm -hmm. uh, with the federal government. So the train was delivering the mail as well as carrying passengers. And passenger travel on the trains was going down because of the cars and the buses and stuff. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> But they still had the revenue coming in from the uh, the mail delivery, mm -hmm. and they had special baggage cars or mail sorting cars, depending on the route, mm -hmm. that had a couple, three uh, people in there, and they would t open that bag up when they collected it and sort it, and or and so they would be dropping mail off and picking mail up, and then. Times changed, and the government decided to do a different way. I guess the airlines and yeah, that's uh, why they call it air mail. <laughs> Well, they used to have airmail. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have that anymore. Used they to. don't? No. Air, all, every, all mail goes the same way. Oh, really? Yeah. When did they quit the airmail? I don't know. In the 60s, maybe? Hmm. Or 70s, maybe? Somewhere in the 60s, I guess. Uh, but you used to be able to get by a, a, a regular stamp was like three cents, and if you wanted to go airmail, it was six cents Double. for your letter. Mm -hmm. Now... Everything is fifty cents or something like that, oh, yeah, <clears> and they we'll they they can pick however they want to send it, either by truck or or now or, it's priority or ground. Or, yeah, well, yeah, if whatever. you get into the packages and everything. yeah, you can still get special delivery to get a little ha extra handling. But uh, but when they did uh, did away with the railroads carrying the mail, that more or less ended the passenger trains because mm -hmm. their tra uh, passengers had fallen off so much. Well, after World War II, yeah, well, about early fifties is when it really, it really started, started going down. Yeah, and when Eisenhower, yeah, when he built the interstate system, started that. Yeah, that's, that's really, really about that's it. really what. And you know, uh, we, we uh, you know, we're in a political season right now. We got all these people running. Really? Yeah, you noticed, huh? We got all these people running for president. Well, back in the forties and the fifties. They would get a train and go from city to city and stand on the back of the car, and people would come down to the station and they would give their speeches and Lincoln stuff. Lincoln done the same thing. Well, yeah. Yeah. I guess Harry Truman might have been about the last <laughs> one that did that big time, really big time. There's been some that's done at small scale, but I mean, across the country from state, city to city, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess on that note, then most uh, post offices started out around the railroad tracks, didn't they? Well, everything was around the railroad in town, the yeah. hotels and everything. Everything. You come, the train come in, cause, <clears throat> and you know they'd get the traveling salesman would get off the train, 
that you go from one city to the next, get off the train, get a room in the hotel. They didn't have cars and taxis and stuff like we do now. So the hotels and everything. Uh, True. Yeah. I mean, you go over to uh, War Trace. Couldn't they call an Uber to come pick them no. up on the train? <laughs> Uber wasn't running wagons <laughs> back then. <laughs> Okay, but, you know, then. you go over to War Trace, and there's a hotel. What's I, I don't think it's open anymore, but there's a hotel oh, right there yeah. beside the track because that was a stop. Okay, know. now, Harry Truman, he actually never did. Did he campaign for an office, or did he quit after uh, uh, Roosevelt's term? You know, he stepped in and took Roosevelt's term. But he ran. He, did, so he ran Because against, Dewey, remember? Uh, so, yeah. They said Dewey won the, won the election. Yeah, yeah, okay. The New York Times or whatever came out and uh, said he won, and he hadn't. And, yes, it's time for another break. Well, anyway. So, that, so he was the last one. Uh, I, he was about one of the last ones to do it big time. Uh, yeah. Now that some have done it small, to short, you know, here and there, but not like it was back then the, that day. All right, right, we'll be right back. <laughs> the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course, those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburger are made the old-fashioned way at the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 7.30 until 9, Monday through Saturday. Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get you used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. $2 fee is all you pay. Sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days, too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking. All right, we're back. <laughs> okay, so, so Roosevelt died in April of 45, and Truman finished out his term. Right. And then Roosevelt, I mean, Truman ran in 48. Yeah, and I think he ran against... And then Newton. Eisenhower took over in 52. I think that's right. That mm -hmm. sounds pretty close. And then... Uh, that uh, when Truman ran, of course, they thought that Dewey won. The, yeah, the New York yeah. Times or what was the issue? Oh, they, Headline. They actually had the paper. You they, can, it was yeah. delivered. It was yes. out on the stands, and of course, then it, the vote finally tallied, and Truman won. So Truman made a last-ditch effort, and it was uh, by train, by if I oh, remember yeah, right, cool. reading about that. He went city to city, went, whistle stop mm -hmm. the whistle stop, if so to speak, yeah. talking to people. Yeah. And, I found a, a pretty unique uh, thing under transportation and of aviation. Well, I'm uh -huh. glad we're still staying on. Uh, well, sort of. we're we're almost on track. This is a Sidewinder missile, uh, oh. scale scale sixty oh, percent scale replica model. Sixty. Sixty percent. So that's, it's it's that's a pretty, big. Pretty, pretty big. Yeah. Uh, they wanted four grand, and they got over thirty five hundred for that. <laughs> I can just see that in my living room. Maybe somebody wanted to scare their. Really? Uh, <laughs> I don't think Helen would let it. neighbors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But. Well, right, go go <laughs> back to the description on that. How big, how big that. is that? See how? Yeah, that's it's all we're going to do. Size. Yeah, but I mean. Look at the description. Let's see how big that thing is. I know it's a scale model. Well, 60%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but is that still probably. I don't think 30. Sidewinders were all that Does it on the description yeah, down there, does it say? Uh, it looks about six foot, well, we'll right seventy there. inches overall length. All right, so a little less than six foot. I can just see that sitting on top of the television, eleven or inch, on top of the mantle on the fireplace. Eleven inch rear wingspan. Yeah, I'd say if, maybe if you helped develop it or something. Let's like see. That. The, let's see a picture of it again. This is not a real missile. This <laughs> is, <laughs> let's see the picture of that. Well, let's see where the okay the tail fins and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's the tail fan. That's that probably side. was made by the man. It almost looks Star Wars. You suppose that yeah, was yeah, made by the, the manufacturer and probably when they did displays or something, you know, at uh, trade shows or something, yeah. you know, and then somebody took it home or got it home. I don't they, know. You know, no modified, no I, parts can be modified to make this a real missile. <laughs> there's uh, lots of warnings on this to go. Well, yeah. do you know why? Because the government be coming to see him. <laughs> Here's a Braniff Airlines, a uh, space bubble helmet and and stewardess hat from 1966. Oh, boy. Uh, $3,200 with hmm. one bid on that. You know, just think of how many people are out there that may have had a relative that worked for, well, let's say, Braniff, and maybe socked away in a box or something this, some items from that person that might be collectible. 
Well, I'll tell yeah. you what is collectible. Yeah. Uniforms. uniforms. Oh, yeah, uniforms. Yeah. And who would think, you know, you'd say, oh, well, that's that's old, and it's that they're, then throw it away. That's why know? this show's lasted 20 years, Harry. Well, it, and yeah, that's true. There's a 1950s uh, United Airlines pilot's uh, uniform with the wings, and it says Captain W.J. Plank on the uh, on the lapel. It was, uh, they wanted $2,400 <laughs> and took a best offer, though. And that's just a 1950s, Yeah, you know. Well, but think American not. American Airlines. But 50, 1950s, how long ago is that? Well, <laughs> hey, you're looking at the 1950s, and I'm yeah, fixing to turn 70. Years. There you go. Yeah. Hey, we're getting down near the end of the program here, guys. we got about a right. minute or so left. All right. If you got one of those, as if you were a kid and they gave you a set of wings on there, some of those are going for $25, yeah, by the way. Yeah, I think the airlines used so, to do that. You know, yeah, the, I remember the when little, I was a little kid. passenger, you know, yeah. and they'd give him a little set of wings and... Uh, a lot of them go for nineteen ninety five, twenty dollars. So, uh, yeah. And those so, are just toys. Yeah, United Airlines uh, Future Pilot yeah. Metal Wings Badge. So these are pre the plastic ones. That they yeah, gave, these are know. the metal ones. They used to so, give those out. That's but cool. uh, but yeah, there's those those even bring a couple of bucks. So. And who would have thought it at the time? Just a yeah, cheap I, toy. I, I throw think, you got broke or you got thrown away, you know. Yeah, I think I got one metal one when I was a kid and flew flew once, but that was Yeah. You know, there's no telling where that that probably didn't even make it back to Tennessee. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Are we out of time? Just about. We got maybe a thirty seconds. Okay. Well give us one. I got a CXX uh train engineer seat to uh spice the, up your your uh to, it says you should put it at your H O scale engineer seat for right, the thing. right so 95 dollars is there good grief <laughs> just <laughs> so you can get you a, a seat. oh my but i'll tell you what it just goes to show you what things can become you know valuable and what people collect or are interested in yeah mm -hmm. i'm trying to figure out what you don't have because every time we have a show you got at least one of them well some of them yeah Did we take any of those out of the box and show them no we didn't No, have we that. have a box full of railroad lanterns that we didn't show yeah, yeah. All right, we're out, we're out of time for today's program. We'll be back next week with uh, more Let's Talk Antiques. And no telling what we'll talk about, but it'll be something, hopefully, exciting. antique and exciting. <laughs> and we won't stay on subject anyway, so <laughs> tune in and see what happens. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>